So this is a very basic tutorial that we're going to run through today. So it's just how to set up a vehicle, how to run it through a mission. It's not doesn't have everything that you'd ever possibly want to do with eVTOL, but it just gets you started, um, gets a vehicle put together and uh, get a mission going. And so you can, you then you can very easily see from here, like how you might want to change things and, um, and start going deeper into SWAP. But I think this is a good introductory that covers some things that are not in the tutorials post online um, and kind of bring you directly to the eVTOL stuff. So kind of overview what I'm gonna go through in these slides, and then we'll jump into the actual tutorial where I actually go through code and we're gonna actually run Suave um, and put together a script. <clears throat> so a little bit about me. Uh, my name's Emilio Botero. Um, I'm in the uh, Stanford Aerospace Design Lab um, with Professor Juan Alonso. Um, I'm a postdoc and I've been there for a little over a year now, but I did my um, PhD in the lab and my, um, my master's degree. Um, and so I've been working on Suave since 2013, uh, 2014, somewhere in there, um, right as I joined Stanford. Um, and I also did my bachelor's degree at Imperial Aeronautical University, and I have a commercial pilot's um, rating. So that gives me a little bit of perspective on how to put together aircraft. Um, so for this tutorial today, you will need um, a computer. Well, so if you're watching this uh, live, you probably will not have time to keep up with this, so don't worry about it. That's why I'm going to give you the files and the recording, and then you can you can play with this afterwards and start playing with the tutorial itself. But to actually run this tutorial that you'll be sending out, um, you'll need a computer with Python 3.6 or greater, um, and then the new version of Swab, it's zero uh, version 2.5.0 that just was released uh, less than two weeks ago, um, and that requires NumPy, SciPy, Scikit-Learn, Matplotlib, um, Plotly. Um, optionally, and we're going to we're going to use a little bit of it today is OpenBSP, which is an open source um, geometry modeler. And um, as I mentioned, this video will be uploaded to our website. So uh, with Suave, um, some of the eVTOL capabilities, so we can we can capture many different types of configurations, so multi-copters, tail sitters, tilt rotors, um, and lift plus crews. So today we're actually going to build this lift plus crews here on the right, and you're probably looking at this horrifically, like this looks horrible. Um, I specifically put together a new configuration that I hadn't seen before, and it's a really bad configuration. Um, and I did this on purpose. I wanted to make a, a tutorial that wasn't anything that existed out there, so I wouldn't go, "Oh, this is this company's air, airframe or something." Um, so it's this is not a realizable aircraft in any way. But um, the whole point is that it looks kind of like an airplane, maybe if you squint. Um, and we'll we'll go through setting it up and running, um, getting it running. Um, and I think the, the major problem with this aircraft is not so much the aerodynamics or anything like that. It's just um, it's not a practical commercializable aircraft. Like I wouldn't want to fly in this personally. So we'll be going over lift plus cruise today. Um, and the reason that was chosen was because that's um, probably the harder of all these different configurations I mentioned. So multi-copter is actually fairly straightforward. The tail sitters um, just have an interesting transition. The tilt wings and tilt rotors are just some extra settings um, compared to some of the multi-copters or uh, fixed wings. So those are, those are all um, just variations on a theme, but the lift plus crew is a little bit more difficult because it has elements of all of them put together. And then, um, so for Suave, so some of the basic things we're gonna go over um, are the electrical power system analysis. So the propellers and rotors, um, and part of the reason I, I picked the lift plus crews is that the distinction between propellers and rotors, and we'll go through that in a little more detail. And I'll explain why these, these look a little bit funky and that's, that's on purpose for this tutorial, but you wouldn't wanna design propellers or rotors that look like this. Um, then we'll go over motors, batteries, um, and then some of the load items that would be in there. Some of these things we're going to skip today because I don't have time, um, but in Suave, we do have weight estimation capabilities. Um, we will go over mission segments for VTOL, and we will go through that. It's also possible in Suave to do wing and rotor interaction. Today, we're not doing that because um, this configuration really doesn't require that, um, given that the, the, the wing and rotor locations don't really interact um, in a favorable manner. Um, and then there's also the ability to do, oops, um, apologize about that, um, payload range diagrams and mission sizing performance. We're not going to go over that. So today we're going to focus on taking a lift plus cruise aircraft um, and analyzing the components um, and the running through mission segment. And like I said, this is a little more complicated than, say, for example, a multi-copter or a tail sitter or a, a tilt rotor or something like that. So all those would be slightly easier. And so this will give you all the skills you need to do to model those. Great. Um, so for today, we're going to do a really simple, um, you know, or flight profile for that uh, vehicle. So again, it's lift plus cruise configuration. So at this part, we're going to hover for about 100 feet. Then we're going to um, climb out on the wing. 
We're going to cruise for 50 nautical miles. We'll descend and then hover again to land. This is going to be a two passenger vehicle, uh, pretty short cruise. It's going to be 50 nautical miles. The point of this was just to put together a quick mission that um, is fairly simple, but can show what SWAP can do. Um, some more things it can do. So if you were to actually do this for real, you would add on a reserve segment, you would add transitions, you would add a little bit of hover space in here, maybe a um, like a stationary hover to then pick some sort of altitude and then hold at that altitude um, where you know maybe you need to maneuver the aircraft or something. So this is a very simplified flight pro profile, but this is nothing to say that Suave can't do that in any way. So um, you can make these as complicated as you want, but these segments are kind of just building blocks that you can just continue to add. And so if, if you're on um, your own research or development, you can continue to make these more complex as you want. So that's the end of um, the slides actually. And then we're gonna, we're gonna build um, the vehicle. So what I've done here is I've actually put together a script. I put this together, that vehicle. And what that does, and I have this blank one here, and then I have a completed script here on the right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through and we're going to go through and we're going to fill in this live tutorial uh, script that shows exactly how all this works. So uh, some of this I'll, I'll fill out by hand and some of this I will, um, I'll just copy and paste because it's a little bit easier. So there's a general flow of things we want to do here in Suave. Um, so the first thing we want to do is we want the imports. Um, well, we'll put the header in first. So this is our live tutorial. So we're going to, we're going to name this here and it's, just so I know. Um, and I'm going to copy and paste that's created by me in November. And then we're going to go through the imports. And I'm going to walk through these imports because they all have, they're all here for a reason and we'll go through them. So we're going to import Suave. Um, and that's usable, useful because then um, it allows me to access the components later. So if I need a wing, for example, I can just call Suave's wings. Uh, NumPy. So this is a, a numerical package within Python, which I'm going to use a lot. Um, you know, Suave is basically built on NumPy, so I'll need that. Now, the next one I have is units. So uh, Suave is able to take different units and convert them as needed. So what, um, what you can see here, and, and we'll go through this, I've actually mixed both um, SI units, so, um, you know, meters, kilograms, um, and imperial units, so pounds and feet um, within this script. So sometimes some things are in feet and some things are um, actually in kilograms. And, and things like that. So nothing, nothing actually is consistent in my script. And um, I actually find that to be a strength of Suave because uh, many times, you know, an airframe manufacturer makes something in some sort of um, component or unit system. And, you know, maybe you're buying a propulsion system where they don't use that same um, unit system. So it's nice to be able to mix and match and use what you need to. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna import is air. What air does is uh, provide the speed of sound, which you use for the rotor mock tips. Um, sorry, the, yeah, the, the tips of the rotor to get to calculate the mock numbers. Um, the mission plots. So at the end of um, producing the mission, we're going to plot. And so this imports all the plots. So, so the star means it import all of them. Uh, the next one is open VSP. And this is uh, to write, we'll, we'll actually write the vehicle out after and make sure that we've actually put it together correctly. And then there are three. Um, Plan form. Oh, I, by the way, are these are my um, is my font too small? Should I make this larger? Yeah, uh, there is one more time we want uh, to change about. Can you make, make, make the font size a little bit bigger? Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry yeah, so about that. Can, right. Here, let's try that. How's this? Yeah, that was that would be much. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry about that. I, I just realized that. Um, so no you, you guys should be able to catch up now. Yeah. Great, uh, I apologize. Okay, so um, yeah, so there are three uh, wing sizing methods I'm importing here. So segment properties, wing segmented platform and wing plan form. I'll go through what those mean. Um, and what they are is, is a, they're little sizing scripts that keep you from having to type in every property of the wing um, and, and we'll go through those. Um, propeller design and um, sizing optimal motors. Um, so we'll import, we'll import those because a lot of times so this is this configuration again is not based on any existing configuration. I tried to make a configuration that it was not like anything I've seen before. Um, so it doesn't I'm not trying to make it look like someone else's configuration. Um, so I had no idea when I put this together um, what it was what it should be. So I just used some guesses and let Swap kind of do the rest to fill out the details I didn't know. 
And then with that is a uh, battery sizing. So I assume a battery size here. Um, I will also need the copy package because I need to do a deep copy. Um, since I have four rotors and I don't want to manually enter in all the details of four different rotors, I will make one rotor and then I will copy all those um, sequentially. So that's what the deep copy is there for. So that's all copied over now. Okay. So in this tutorial, we're going to go over um, setting up the vehicle, which is the, which is actually the hardest part of this is putting together this EV tall. Um, the next thing is we're going to set up the analyses. So this is what the um, what the sort of methods we want to actually call during the mission. Um, then we'll set up the mission. This will this will actually put on our mission profile. It'll evaluate the results here, and then we'll make the plots. And so this is um, probably enough for us to do in about an hour. Um, anything more than that, um, we could potentially do other videos. Um, I think this may end up being a video series in the future, but we'll see how this goes. So this main file, which is the first thing I'll, I'll fill in here, um, we'll, we'll actually have it. So this is a function here. So we're gonna, we're gonna define main. Um, and this return here is optional um, because it doesn't actually return anything, but we're gonna define this main. And we're gonna go down to the bottom of the script here. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add this line here in this if name um, equals main, um, and it will call main and it will show the plots. The reason for this flow, you don't have to use this flow, but it's a nice sequential flow that allows the, um, the vehicle to be used for other things later on. So I like being able to sort of compartmentalize this so that I, I'm able to separate the vehicle from the mission. Um, Suave was intended for this way. So the vehicle data is separate than the mission data. Um, similarly, the analysis data is separate from um, the mission data and the, the vehicle data and it all gets combined into one when you actually go to solve it. So by splitting everything out into different uh, functions, you're able to compartmentalize it. And then later on, what maybe what happens is you change the mission you wanna run. You don't have to totally change your script. You just change one part of your script and you can run a different mission. You can just substitute them out. So that's, that's what I'm trying to do here is, is split these out. So we'll, and we'll continue to walk through this. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the vehicle. So we'll add this to our main and we'll set up a vehicle. And we'll add this vehicle function and again, this is a, a separate out, separated function. And we'll have this vehicle. And it's not going to take any, um, not going to take any parameters at this point because the vehicle is just a bare bones vehicle. Um, there's no inputs for this. Now, once you, this is not covered in this tutorial. Um, there's tutorials on our website that show how to do this. But if you have a vehicle and then you want to optimize, you actually don't need to pass anything thing through here. Um, once the vehicle is instantiated, Swap can then change the data structure for you. Um, so, so don't worry about having to pass anything here. Okay, so we're going to initialize the vehicle. That's the first part here. I'm going to copy this over. Um, and I know this copying thing is kind of tedious because I'm going to go through, but I wanted to step this through just so you know what I'm talking about at each point. So we're going to actually instantiate this vehicle. So we're going to call swab.vehicle. So that is the, um, the base vehicle class. This is just an empty vehicle saying, hey, this is an airplane. And, um, and we're going to name it eVTOL, but we can name it whatever you want to. Um, this is just mostly for your own convenience to know what exactly this is. We've done analyses in Suave where you have multiple vehicles. Um, I've actually run hundreds of vehicles <laughs> at once, um, which is crazy. Um, so it's nice to have different names. Um, so you know which one you're look, working on. Um, next, we'll, we'll put together some of the uh, high level properties and I'll, I'll work through these because this is something that actually confuses a lot of folks. Um, so let me copy these over and then I will go through these in detail here. So the mass properties, and there's a distinction between these. Um, so the takeoff weight, so the vehicle dot mass properties, this is the overall vehicle level um, weight. I'm going to set the takeoff weight to 2,500 pounds. And now if you're not familiar with pounds, it's a, uh, that's a little bit over a thousand kilos, maybe like 1100 kilos. That um, that weight is not, um, that is not the maximum weight the airplane can, can take off with. That is actually just the weight that we are intending to fly the mission with, if that makes sense. So this weight I can change to be anything else and it won't physically change the vehicle. What I'm doing is I'm changing the, the, um, the initial weight of the vehicle to start the mission. So I can change this on the fly. Um, and this is how you would change if you're gonna build, build like a payload range diagram you change functionally what you're doing is you're changing the takeoff weight. Now the operating empty weight, um, this is usually something that's an output, but um, we're not gonna do the uh, mass property script in this um, because of time. 
So for this, I'm going to set the operating empty weight to be 2,150 pounds. So that leaves 350 pounds for the occupants. Um, so this is a two passenger aircraft, um, FAA um, standard air passenger weights around 170 pounds. So that leaves a little bit of buffer. So um, 2150 for the operating empty weight. So with batter and everything ready to go, just add passengers. And now this isn't supposed to be fully, um, you know, realistic in real life. You would, you know, if you're going to design this for real, you're going to spend a little more time to figure out what these weights are. Like I said, you're going to run um, some of the processes in SWAB that can analyze the weights in more detail. Um, there's the max takeoff weight. Um, so what the max takeoff weight is, and it's actually not going to be used in this tutorial, but it's used in the weight sizing. So if you select a max takeoff weight, that'll be used for a weights analysis to figure out, um, for example, how big the bars need to be for the wing, because the max takeoff weight will then drive those sorts of weights. And then that will then calculate the, the um, operating empty. So in theory, I actually don't even need this. I could comment this out and this would still work. Similarly, max payload, um, these two um, are actually both used for um, the weights analysis. So I think the only one I really need today is this one, um, the, the takeoff weight. Um, everything else is, is unnecessary just, just to fly the aircraft. Um, but for further analyses, we would need this. Um, now the center of gravity, we do have center of gravity calculations within SWAV, um, but for this, and I made a note, I made this up. We're not going to go through this today. Again, I don't have enough time. And we're, but within SWAV, we do have the ability for it to calculate the centers of gravity. So at this point, I put it at two meters back from the nose, um, which ended up, you know, when I eyeballed it, um, roughly about the, um, the root cord of the wing, or sorry, the root of the wing, um, which is probably not quite right, but it doesn't really matter. We're not doing a stability analysis. The uh, analysis we're going to run today is only going to have performance pr uh, parameters. Um, another set of parameters that are, would be useful um, if you were doing a weights analysis is the ultimate load and limit load. So these are fairly standard. We're going to copy these over as well. Um, but we're, like I said, we're not going to actually end up using them. So to, to kind of clarify here, then most of these items you don't need just to run an analysis um, and that flies the aircraft. You only need these for weights analyses. The takeoff weight is the one that is, is the one that um, you need to run to fly the vehicle. Um, so I get questions a lot of, you know, why do I, if I change one of these, nothing changes on my mission. So the takeoff weight's the one you're looking for. And it's on the user to sort of put these all together in a consistent way. Cause many times what you want to run is different. Okay, great. So now let's put together um, the main wing. And so I um, will start putting their wings here. Um, that's to me, one of the first important things I want to design a wing. Um, and I'm going to pick this, put this um, main wing here. Um, so the main wing is kind of a, it's nice key. Um, clear, like this kind of clarifies to every set of analyses that this is the primary wing. So for uh, many different analyses, like weights analyses. That, hey, this is the load bearing wing. This is not a control surf. You know, this doesn't really have the. Um, it's not a horizontal tail. It's not a vertical tail. So it ends up sizing a lot of the other analyses later on, and it's using them multiple ways. Uh, so if you if you do this and you delete main and you make it just a generic wing, Suave will still run. However, I highly suggest you be as specific as possible anytime you use Suave. If you know this is your main wing, um, you should you should specify it. Now, if you had like a configuration like the um, Airbus Bahana, where you had two main wings, it's totally valid to use both. Um, we try to make Suave flexible so, such that if there are two, um, you can use both. Um, if you are not sure what you want to call your main wing, you can just call one a generic wing. That's also an option. So this is our main wing. We're going to call it main wing, and it's going to have an origin um, one and a half meters behind the origin of the nose. Um, it's going to be symmetrical about um, the XY plane and it will be a low wing aircraft. So it'll be down half a meter. I copied this wing from another project that we did. Um, so this is, you know, I thought it was a nice looking wing to, just to borrow. But yeah, so this is in feet. So 35 feet and, um, you know, three and a quarter uh, feet in root. Now this is a, a more complex wing. So in Suave, I actually don't need to put all the segments in here. So later on, I'll show you some very simple wings, the horizontal tail and vertical tails. Those are more simple, but for this, we're actually gonna use um, the more complex tail, or sorry, the more complex wing um, definitions. So there's more than one way to do this. 
But what I've done is I've I picked the minimum amount of items that I think are necessary, and I'm going to use some automatic sizing here on the bottom to actually put these. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make a segment, and so this is gonna be the root segment of the wing. So the first um, point of the wing. So what happens is I'm gonna declare the root chord of this wing to be three and a quarter feet, and now at that zero uh, span percent, I'm gonna then define the twist. Um, sorry, this this is weird. Root chord percent. So this is 150. I don't know. That was a mistake, but that'll that'll still run. Um, oh, I know why this is. So the, the 3.25 is where it would leave the, um, the, the fuselage because the swing is actually inside the, uh, the fuselage. So this was done on purpose. Um, so this is at the root. So it's at percent span location zero. Um, so and our percentage is not in, even though we say percent, oh, I actually have to copy the, the segment and the tag. Even though we say percent, um, and it's zero, that's, um, that is like, so 0% be 0 0.00, does that make sense? And then, so similarly, this is 22.7%. Um, so 100% would be one. So when I say root chord percent, this is actually 150%. So at the root, there's zero twist. So this is um, uh, the twist angle. Um, so this is really an incidence angle because it's the, it's the root. Uh, we don't differentiate in suave the difference between incident and twist because this is kind of an arbitrary to us it's kind of an arbitrary thing. Um, so there's there's some people who get caught up on the semantics of is this twist in incidence? Um, so because this is the root, this is your incidence of the wing, uh, but we keep it twist um, just to be consistent with the rest of the segments. All right, and then uh, the root chord percent, like I mentioned, this is inside the fuselage, so the root chord percent is actually 150 percent of what that is. And this was um, part of the just design of this. Now the next part is the dihedral. So the dihedral outboard is just going to be one degree, and it's going to be in units of degrees. If you put one in here, it doesn't default to one degree; it defaults to one radian. So be careful on that in the future. Is if you put um, anything that's angular and suave is a radian unless it's specified as a degree. So be careful with that units dot degrees. So the dihedral, um, and then the quarter chord sweep for this is eight and a, um, eight point five degrees. That was fairly arbitrary, and then it's the uh, thickness to chord ratio of that airfoil. I haven't defined airfoils here, but you can define airfoils in suave. We'll go over some airfoils later on um, when we define the propellers and rotors. Um, but so you can also append airfoils to each of these sections, uh, segments. So this is starting at the, the root and going outboard. So this is saying at this point, if I were to um, assign an airfoil, well, this is an 18% uh, thick airfoil. So SWAB will default this to uh, NACA uh, 0018. But yeah, like I said, if you uh, assign an airfoil, what would happen is that airfoil would exist at the root section. And then at the next section, there would be another airfoil. And that would just be linear lofted, linearly lofted between them. So we will add this uh, quarter chord um, sweep and our thickness to chord and then append the segment. Oop. And put that there. Um, I'm not gonna go through these in a lot of detail um, just because now that I've explained what each of these things mean, um, we can go through this. So this section, this is, this is roughly where the fuselage meets the, um, the wing, but not exactly because I still swing off another aircraft. Um, so it's 22.7%, uh, um, zero twist, uh, the root chord percent. So now this is one, um, so this is where it comes out. The dihedral is one degree, um, and now this wing becomes straight. So there's no longer any sweep on this. And the thickness to chord goes down because now this is outside. Um, this was 18% because it was inside the wing, or sorry, inside the fuselage, inside the lofts. And so that can be a little bit thicker. You can make this spar a little bit um, beefier. And so that was for a weights analysis. Um, so we'll add this one. Um, and then the tip is very straightforward. So we have a tip segment. Um, it's at a one for this percent span location, one being 100%, um, no twist, um, and the root chord percent. Because we're going to carry this through as a non-tapered wing, it's going to be one. Um, the dihedral outboard, this is totally irrelevant. You can make this whatever value you want. I don't know why it's one, so it could be zero. Um, because at that, once you're at the tip, there's nothing outboard of that. Um, the quarter chord sweep, again, this also does nothing because anything outboard of that. However, the thickness to chord ratio does actually apply because that puts an airflow at the tip. 
All right, now these other functions, we're actually gonna go into these and see how they work. So I wanted to show this on purpose. So we have segment properties. These, we're gonna call this next. And what this is gonna go through, it's gonna go through um, the wing and pull off these, these specific things. Um, so you can see the parameters we have. So symmetric, so because I've picked the main wing, um, the main wing defaults to being symmetric. Um, we've, we've put the, um, the projected span, um, the thickness to cord. Um, that is actually, so these, these values are actually of the segment. Um, so the thickness to cord is not used. The areas of wetting, those are, those are then calculated. So you can see how these be used and what the outputs are. But basically what's going to go through is there are more um, data items that could be calculated for each segment individually. And these are calculated automatically. So each segment has a taper ratio, has its own mean aerodynamic cord, and it has its own reference area and exposed wetted areas. So for the aerodynamic calculations later, it's useful to know the, the exposed area and the wetted areas. Now I haven't put the exposed root cord offset, um, and actually I should add that because that will be um, inside inside the wing. So that I believe um, I will just make up like a, a number for this right now. It'll be zero point five. Um, what that means is this is actually inside a fuselage, like I mentioned before. I just didn't fill this out, so this would have been defaulted to zero when I when I practiced this. Um, yeah, so like I said, this will go through. This will go through each segment and update each segment with these extra parameters that we did not define that are used for the aerodynamic analyses. So we're going to go. Um, I don't know why I changed it here. Um, we're going to copy these segment properties. So these aren't properties of the entire wing that's calculating. It's again, just of the segments themselves. Now, once you have the properties of the segments, then you can fill out the wing segmented plan form. Now these are done um, independently. Um, we, you could potentially string them together and make them to fun one function that, that's possible too. Um, but they're independent for re uh, reasons so they can do them functionally different um, depending on how you were to set up an optimization problem or something like that. In the past, we've done that. So the wing segmented plan form. Now what this does is it takes the wing and it will go through the wing and it will update um, based on all those segments that are now fully filled out and update the high level um, parameters of the wing. So the total wing span, so total wing span is not the projected span because you could have a curved wing. Um, we didn't actually specify a, a tip cord. Um, we specified a segment, but that doesn't have a top level tip cord. Um, the, mean air, the mean aerodynamic cord of the entire wing, uh, the mean geometric cord of the wing, the reference area. Again, I didn't actually um, give a reference area here. So that's gonna calculate the reference area. What the taper would be, um, the overall quarter cord sweep, if, for example, you're going to take this wing and you're going to project it so to be a complex multi-segmented wing, um, what, the, what the simplified aspect ratio um, would be. And similarly, the uh, simplified um, quarter cord sweep, right? Because this is a complex wing, quarter cord sweep's kind of vague. So we're going to, this is going to come up with an estimated value if you're going to simplify the wing. Um, and there's also a dihedral. So this is an overall, overall dihedral. This also gives you the aerodynamic center, which is used for stability calculations later on. Um, so it fills out all these things automatically. So this is a lot less, all of these we would have to calculate by hand if we didn't. So in my mind, this is a very minimal set of geometric things that we need to enter to get this, this wing put together. Um, so that's, that's how that one works. Um, and now we're going to do a couple important things. So the next thing we're going to do is the vehicle also needs a reference area. And I, when I made this wing, I had no idea what the actual wing area was because it was calculated by this function here. So I'm going to set the vehicle reference area here. Uh, and you're going to ask why I would do this. And it's because many times in aerodynamic analyses, uh, it's possible to have a vehicle reference area, which is not the same as the wing reference area. Um, I, we see this a lot of time. People have configurations where like, we're going to normalize by a very, very even number. Um, and they're going to pick a number, and that's going to be the reference value. But that may not physically be the reference area of the wing, which are used for aerodynamic, aerodynamic calculations. So this allows um, this vehicle dot reference area allows you to have that flexibility. But in our case, we're going to say the vehicle reference area is the same reference area as the as the main wing. Great. Um, and then we will append to the vehicle. So this has um, add to vehicle here. I have append component. What that will do is look at the vehicle and say, okay, I got a wing. 
And now I'm going to put this in vehicle.wings and I'm going to put all the wings together. I'm going to go through the horizontal tail in detail, but then I'll skip over the vertical tail because it's pretty much the same. So for the um, horizontal tail, um, like I said, we're going to say, hey, specifically, this is a horizontal tail. I made up these numbers. It's got a reference area of uh, two meters squared. So I could have put this units dot uh, meters squared. However, um, Swab defaults to SI. So if you are using SI, it already knows that, hey, this is, um, this is two meters squared. Uh, the taper ratio for this um, horizontal tail is 0 0.5. It has 20 degrees of quarter cord sweep. Um, the aspect ratio is 5. The thickness of cord is 12%. And it's got 5 degrees of dihedral, apparently. Um, I put the origin further back. You'll see in the fuselage how this breaks down. Um, but yeah, I put the origin further back and then a little bit higher up. I'm going to copy this over um, and then if you probably noticed here, I haven't actually given it every sort of parameter that it would possibly need. I, for example, don't know the span of this because I haven't entered the span, but I can look at this wing plan form and you can see that I've actually put in um, all of these um, that are necessary. So I've given it the reference area, I've given it the taper, the quarter cord sweep, the aspect ratio, the thickness to cord, dihedral. Now vertical, it already knows, well, it's a horizontal tail, so it's not a vertical tail. So that's, that's a given. Um, symmetric, that's a default, and I've given it the origin. The rest of these, um, it does not have flaps, so they're not assigned, so this is just going to pass through. But then after that, it will calculate the rest of the properties necessary. So the, the root cords, the tip cords, the mean geometric cords, the mean dynamic cords, the wetted areas, the affected areas, and projected areas. Because um, if we go back to our, and we'll show this again later, um, there's not very a lot of fuselage in the back. The, um, the reference, sorry, the wetted area is, um, is pretty much what it would be without a fuselage because it's there's really not inside anything. So I don't have to do any special calculations there. So that will size that. And then uh, we'll add that here. Now, um, for the vertical tail, we do much the same thing. So set the, set the different parameters and then append them. Um, we use that same script again. So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna add that, okay. Now for the fuselage, this is a more complex fuselage. We've also done a segmented fuselage. Um, I'm going to go through this fairly quickly because um, we still have a lot more to go through. So the fuselage here, not actually all of these are 100% necessary, but I like to fill out some of these ones. If you know the number, um, just fill it out. Um, so it's got a fuselage, I'm it fuselage. There's two seats of breast. You really don't need this one. Um, for what we're doing today. Um, the nose and tail finest you do need, we do use those for the aerodynamic analyses as well as the nose, tail, um, and total lengths. So these are all necessary because it needs to know um, for some of the aerodynamic um, parts because we use um, a lot of uh, shape analyses to get the, the, the drag coefficient. So these are useful parameters. Similarly, um, the widths and the heights. Um, so these are all something I, we just measured out um, and then the wetted areas, this is a total guess. If I were to be doing this for real, um, I would use OpenVSP. Um, I would send this to OpenVSP and I would query it. We have functions for that that actually do give you the wetted areas. Um, so this is a total stab in the dark, um, as well as the front projected area and affected diameter. So, um, so some of these are just do as best as you can for now because we're just making something up. Once you have geometry involved and you have a, this CAD engine like um, OpenVSP, we can update these and do much better. But for now, we're just gonna we're gonna assume that those are okay. Um, so those are all copied, and now we're gonna go through segments. So the fuselage is segmented much like the wing is. Um, it's a little simpler. Um, these they use basically ellipses um, rather than you know an airfoil or something like that. So it just specifies the x location, z location. Remember these are, these percents where zero is um, well one is is so 100% is one. So this means this is down by 5%. Um, so this puts the nose a little bit lower than the, um, than the, um, than the, like the basically the center of a circle. So just a little bit lower. So that gives it a nice nose shape. Um, it gives a segment height and width um, of the of the first point. So, and this will be, again be an ellipse shape. And these Z, uh, these percent Z and X are actually given by the total length. So the um, the total length of this vehicle is six meters. Um, in case you were wondering, so that that is what the percentage is based on. 
So this is the no section here. Similarly, we have the, um, this is a little bit further back, sort of where the passengers start um, entering. And then this is behind the passengers. Um, and then I'm just gonna keep copying and pasting through this for a little bit, um, just add them in because we need to keep moving. So these are all fairly straightforward, I hope. Um, and once you have this installed in your computer and you have these tutorials later, you can play around with these and see how they actually affect the, fusel the fuselage. Now, the other thing we need to add are booms. So each, um, each of these rotors on the wing, uh, sorry, well, not each, but each side of the wing has a set of rotors. If you notice, we, um, we have a quadcopter, which is really not the most, um, you wouldn't want to build a quadcopter, like, let's be honest here. Um, I, I hopefully I acknowledge that in the beginning that this vehicle is not a realistic vehicle in that way. So um, you would probably have more booms or possibly that you could make this an octocopter and put um, motors on each side of the booms and have um, extra rotors. But we're going to set up two booms. And for the sake of time, I'm not actually going to put two booms here. I'm actually going to make a right boom and then I'm going to mirror that and make a left boom. And so that's what this deep copy is for. So I will, um, we'll go through these pretty fast because these are also the same parameters as a fuselage. These booms are just fuselages. Um, they're just very long fuselages. So I picked an origin. Um, I did this just by picking some numbers that looked good um, when I plotted it. Um, I calculated the wetted area and projected area just based on the geometry. These numbers I just made up last night. So, um, and if there's any questions on how any of these, these lengths, widths, and heights all work together, please let me know. You can add them in the chat. We're going to append this boom. So that'll be the right boom. And then because I don't want to enter these numbers again, I'm going to mirror it. Mirror it. So I'll deep copy the boom, and that'll be the other boom. And then I will take the origin. So um, I should mention here, I didn't go through this in detail. These are double origins. Um, the reason for these double origins is to be consistent with propulsors, because um, if you have a symmetric jet engine, that means you have two. Um, and you can have multiple origins. These are two different components entirely. Um, so they have different total origins, so you couldn't stack them up. But um, so these have basically, long story short, Suave uses double brackets. So this is um, indexing that this is the first entity and the, so the zeroth is the first, so this set of brackets and then this item. So this zero comma or zero, you could also write this this way if you wanted, but um, either way. Um, yeah, so that's basically just mirroring the Y position on the other side. So it's the negative Y value across the aircraft. Okay, so that's that's the wings, um, the horizontal tail, the vertical tail, the fuselage, and two booms. So we've actually gone quite a ways in making this, put this vehicle together. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a lift plus cruise network. Um, what I'm gonna also show you is what the other options are because this has changed in Swab 2.5 if anyone has used any of the earlier swabs. So if we go in our components, um, hopefully folks can see a small font here, but we have energy um, and then we have a list of networks. Um, so we have a lift plus cruise network and this is what we're gonna go through today. Uh, but we also, the main one that most folks would wanna use for eVTOL is a battery propeller network. And so this is the most general um, network. So if you're going to use a multi-copter or um, a tilt rotor or basically uh, anything else that's not a uh, lift plus cruise configuration have different set of motors um, or different set of rotors from propellers, you would want to um, use this network. But for today, we're going to use the lift plus cruise. Um, so this has been revamped since um, Suave 2.5 and it has a couple new nice tricks. Um, that helps set it up for um, a mission. And we'll go through those a little bit later, but for now, let's get, let's get set up and put all the properties in there. All right, that's the live tutorial, not my UTAL tutorial. Okay, so the network. So we'll copy over this network now. And we're gonna instantiate a lift plus cruise network. And as I mentioned before, we're just going to put four rotors because I don't want to have to go through and uh, put eight or 12 and one propeller engine. Um, so those will just, it needs to know kind of a priori, you know, what it's working with. So our propellers and rotors are all identical. Now this is an assumption you can make, and this is speeds up analysis. So if you do not use this flag, what will end up happening is 
It will then run each rotor or propeller independently when it analyzes the system. Um, if you put true, it's going to say, hey, they're all the same. I'm going to run them once and just copy the results. So if you're going to do something that's more like an asymmetrical flight profile, you kill an engine or something like that, you no longer have identical lift rotors because you're in a condition where they're no longer um, working the same. So this splits out the, um, the conditions of that. I think another use case would be um, if you have some beta angle of the aircraft. Um, and if you have a beta angle like that, then the, the rotors are seeing different flow profiles. But for this simplified case, those are all gonna be the same to save some time. The voltage, we're gonna assume 400 volts um, of the system. This is sort of just a top level parameter that gets used by a lot of the components later on. Um, so we'll call that. Now, the next simple thing is a speed controller. So um, this is just a power regulation thing. And this is just kind of electric load. We're gonna say, hey, it's 95% efficient. So basically you have 5% loss for both the, um, the rotor and lift that are um, on the um, set of propulsors. So basically that's just an efficiency of the speed controllers. Um, you could do something more fancy, uh, but for Suave, I don't think anyone's clamored for anything fancier than say, hey, we just have some efficiency losses. Uh, this requires a payload. Um, there's no payload on this one. So payload would be something where if you have like a drone or something like that, that has, you know, camera packages, uh, FLIR or something like that, this is where this is used. Um, this network is used extensively for other types of drones and things like that. So having some sort of power law, uh, power draw on the payload, um, just we're going to set that to zero. However, we do have avionics. Um, I don't know what these avionics are because this is a totally a made up problem, but we'll just say they pull 300 watts, which is like a, a pretty decent computer. Um, so that's going to draw 300 watts at all times. Um, that avionics needs to also handle um, servo actuation. So the, you may need to change this if you know how much uh, power draw is coming off of servos for um, control surfaces or um, collectives or cyclics or anything more fancy than that. So this is kind of a catch-all. What's my avionics going to draw? And you'd probably want to size this to whatever worst case is. Next, we're going to go through the battery. I'm going to use a very simple um, battery setup in this, this problem. Uh, Suave uh, 2.5 actually now has a new battery model that allows you to do um, more stuff at the cell level. We're not, I don't have time in this to go over this in huge detail. So we're going to skip this and we're going to use a simple, um, this uh, little lithium nickel uh, magnesium cobalt. So this is a mouthful, but it's an 18650. These are pretty well used right now. Um, so we do have a couple more um, Battery chemistries now included with Suave if, if folks are interested. Um, so the lithium iron phosphates are included as well as the, the traditional just regular vanilla lithium ion. Um, there's gonna be more battery chemistries in the future that we're, we're using. So there's battery design and, um, and more details are, are actually in Suave and there, there's even more coming. I'm not going to, in this tutorial, go over um, thermal properties in Suave, because if you go to the cell level, you actually can model the thermal properties and actually get to a lot more detail on, well, how many cells do you have um, and actually see at the cell level what the temperatures and things like that are going. So uh, we're going to skip that for today, just in the interest of time. But Suave is able to do that. So we're just going to say, hey, I have a thousand pounds of batteries, which is a lot because we have a 2,500 pound airplane. Um, so this is, you know, over 40% of the um, max takeoff weight batteries. So it's, this is a very um, heavier clip. I've just made those numbers up. You would need to do additional sizing and, um, and calculations to figure out how much battery mass to include there. Now we're going to add the propellers. And so this is where things get a little more interesting here. So uh, the propellers. So we have a tractor propeller. So we're going to instantiate a propeller. So it's components, energy, converters, and propellers. So it's an energy converter. So we're taking um, rotational energy and converting that into um, aerodynamic energy. And that is why it's there. So the origin, so remember in the fuselage, we put the, um, the nose a little bit lower. So the origin is going to be 0, 0. So 0 in the x length, 0 in the y, and then down a little bit in the z direction from the, the center of the axis system of the vehicle. Uh, I should have mentioned at the beginning, the, uh, the axis system for vehicles in Suave is X back um, through the vehicle towards the tail, from the nose to the tail. Y is out the right wing and Z is up. So the negative means that it is below the, um, the center of the fuselage. 
The number of blades, so we have a three blade propeller. Um, the tip radius is 0 0.9 meters. So this is a fairly large blade um, and the hub radius is 10 centimeters. Uh, 2200 RPM is the design vol um, angular velocity. So this is sort of an optional step. Um, we're gonna then size this. We're gonna use this propeller design script. Um, it'll use this angular velocity the free stream velocity, as well as this design CL, altitude, and thrust to actually design the propeller for us automatically. Um, so this is used the, uses the uh, uh, Adkins and Liebeck uh, formulation for minimum induced, minimum induced loss. So it takes the hub radius, the tip radius, and then these other elements here to actually analyze and create an optimum propeller um, for those design conditions. Now, um, if we were to do a more advanced tutorial, you'd find that this is not the, the only way to create a propeller. Um, you can do this manually as well, because what this is really doing when I open this up is it's creating a set of um, twist distributions and chord distributions across the, uh, the propeller. So it's taking a number of stations and it's gonna create that distribution of uh, the propeller. I think there's other stations too. So this is actually, yeah. So there's the thickness distribution, the twist distribution, chord distribution, radius. So there's there's a lot more um, calculations here that actually this will will do for you. So, um, but this this quick little script will fill that out for you. So um, for this, if you go back to that diagram I showed where it had the um, flight profile, um, I don't think I said how many knots we're going to cruise at. We're going to cruise at 100 knots. The design CL of this airfoil we're going to say is 0 0.7, um, 5,000 feet. I know we're going to climb to 3,000, but um, we're going to do 5,000 just to give it a little bit of a buffer. Our design thrust is about 500 pounds. Again, to give it a little bit of buffer, the aircraft needs to climb. It's not necessarily at the cruise condition. It needs to, needs to be able to perform above and beyond what we designed for. Um, so this is, this is sort of where um, it's gonna do the minimum induced loss. Now for the airfoil geometry, I'm gonna specify, and I have this in a folder here um, where this, this file is saved. I have this NACA 4412. Now you don't need to specify this. Suave will default to um, a, a default uh, Drella airfoil actually. Um, that's a Lauren Reynolds number propeller airfoil um, and it has a fit for that. I have included these geometry files because it gives you a, a better um, geometric definition when you export to OpenVSP after, which we'll show you in a little bit. Um, so if you do include airfoils, you have to also include the polars. These polars are um, different Reynolds number runs um, uses X, using XFOIL. Um, if you don't have these files, they actually are included with SWAB. They're in the regressions folder. Um, there's a little secret here that I'm gonna give. That in the regressions folders, there's vehicles and there's airfoils. So if you go search for these, these are actually included. So you don't, if you ever need to find these um, and some examples, these are here. So let's copy over this propeller and actually, yeah. Copy over that because I've talked about that and I'll talk about the rest of this here. This line here um, is a little bit confusing. So this airfoil polar station says at which point um, uses which airfoil. So this is a one airfoil for each, the entire propeller. But for example, you may want to design an airfoil which has multiple um, airfoils. Uh, and at each station throughout the year, um, you have a different, so each station throughout the propeller, you maybe have different airfoils. Um, this is saying, I'm gonna put a bunch of zeros. So I'm gonna use the zero airfoil at all 20 stations. So this, basically this line here, if I execute this um, down here at the bottom. This just gives me a bunch of zeros and just says, hey, all these air airfoils, all these stations use the zero airfoil. Perfect, so I'll add that. And then we'll design the propeller. So those will fill out the other attributes. And then we are gonna add it. So that's gonna add the propeller. Um, so the network has a set of propellers. And so if you had multiple propellers, you could continue to append propellers and which we'll show with the rotors. Now for the rotors, this gets a little bit more interesting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat here and I'm going to use the propeller design script and I'm going to warn you never to do what I'm about to do. And there's good reason for this. So the propeller design script is for designing propellers. Functionally in Suave, propellers and rotors are treated the same. They're actually the same analysis script. Um, they work very similarly. However, um, the way you design a rotor is not the same as you design a propeller. Um, the minimum induced loss condition is not the sort of um, 
the condition that you want to design a, uh, a rotor around. You really look for figure of merit. Um, so I haven't included this here, but you can do a simple optimization using Suave. You can take a rotor, maybe you pick um, just a blank rotor and you say, hey, I'm gonna have a constant cord rotor of this tip radius, and then you can optimize it later. I'm not gonna go over to that because that's a little bit more work than I have time for in this tutorial. So what I'm gonna do, because I don't have the time to go through and put this all together, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat, I'm gonna use Propeller Design. This is actually gonna give me a suboptimal um, rotor. Um, if I were able to plot, plot the figure of merit of this, this would probably not be a great um, rotor, but we're going to use it anyways because it's going to work and you'll find that it works. Um, like I had mentioned before, our analysis of rotors and propellers are identical and we are actually using a true rotor analysis. Um, what I'm trying to get at is if you do do this correctly and you do design a rotor, if you take a helicopter rotor and you put it in here, the performance would be superior than using the propeller design script. But let's work through this, um, and I'm going to highlight a few things that you can do here. So the tip radius, so these are going to be large rotors, um, especially compared to the, um, the propeller. So 1.5 meters in the radius, um, 15 centimeters of the hub. Now they're going to be four bladed. We don't want to go too fast, so a Zion Mach of 0.65. However, um, I need the, the um, for the angular velocity, I'm going to size that 0.65 so that the angular velocity keeps the Mach number um, down. So um, that's why I imported air at the beginning, so I compute the speed of sound at air. If, for example, I had, I was going to compute this, I don't know, at a temperature um, that's much higher. So in Teltman, I could put this at like 350 degrees or something like that, which is super hot, but um, that's not the point. <laughs> um, so you you could change that here, but this is just sea level speed of sound. Give me the sea, be, speed, uh, sea level speed of sound, and we're going to calculate the angular velocity based on that. Um, yeah. The design CL, the altitude, uh, the design thrust. So um, the aircraft weighs 2,500 pounds and we're gonna divide that by four. This does not account for an engine out condition. I, this, again, this is another reason why this aircraft is not um, feasible. Um, you would never size this this way. In reality, you would size it something like this. You would do three minus one or four minus one, right? Because you have four, you'd assume you have an engine out condition. Uh, that's not gonna be, we're not gonna do that today. Um, we're going to skip that. This is a variable pitch. Um, I actually want to set this to false. That, that should not be variable pitch because we're not changing that today. So that'll be false. Um, and then we're using the same air hole geometries. We're going to same the same trick here. So this is all very similar. That variable pitch would only be used if um, there was a collective um, associated with these are going to be fixed pitched. Um, I didn't actually set up the rest of this to be able to be variable pitch. Now, as I add these, I'm going to actually append them to the to the vehicle automatically. And um, I'm going to sorry to interrupt you. Yes, uh, I think you, you have made a mistake on the uh, design thrust of the of the lip rotor. It should be uh, divided by four. Oh yes, thank you. Them. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. That probably this probably wouldn't run very well. Ignore. Yeah, thank you. We can continue. Yeah. Um, okay, great. Let me also fix this here so I don't make that mistake later. So we have the um, the origins. Um, so the rotations. So this sign here, uh, one minus one. Um, so one is the traditional um, rotation that you know the Western you know uh, aircrafts are used to. So if you were if this were a propeller, not a rotor. Um, this would be um, clockwise from the pilot's perspective, uh, and minus one is counterclockwise. So um, it just depends on your perspective here. So this is because this is a multi-copter, you'd want to alternate these. When I plot these later, um, OpenVSP, the way we have exported right now, doesn't actually flip them. So in Suave, they are they are flipped. And if you are not using identical propellers, it would know that they are going to spin opposite opposite directions. So this is not 100% necessary, but I would I would just um, Push you if you're actually going to use these for eVTOL analysis, you should probably include these rotation um, directions because it is useful. Uh, now the origins. So these origins are just lined up to be the origins that are on top of the origins of the um, the fuselage booms that we made earlier. And we're gonna we're gonna just copy this over here. And then we're gonna go through and we're gonna actually append these sequentially. Um, so we're gonna deep copy the lift rotors and then we're gonna append them. Now I'm gonna point out something a little weird that's going to be like, well, I'm going to tag them all the same lift rotor, um, but they're gonna, then they're going to be appended. So why don't they all be called lift rotor? 
what will happen here actually is when you append, Suave will say, oh, I already have a lift rotor. Okay, this one's gonna be lift rotor two, this one's gonna be lift rotor three, and then this one's gonna be lift rotor four. So it'll automatically update the naming um, if, you, if you name everything the same. Um, so that's just a simple for loop here. And then, um, oops, this line should not be there. That, that's a mistake. Now, um, next, we have the, we're going to put the motors in. So this is kind of nice because there's an optimum motor sizing script here. What we're going to do is we're going to take, um, we're going to instantiate a motor. And we're going to say, we want to run the motor at 95% efficiency, which is pretty good. Um, at the max voltage of the, um, the network or the battery, which is the same. Uh, the battery mass, we're just gonna arbitrarily set this to two kilograms. We do have battery mass sizing. Um, you, there's, a, there's a lot of ways you can do this. Um, the origin is gonna be the same as the propellers for the propeller um, and then the tip radius. So this size optimal motor is actually gonna run an optimization process um, behind the scenes that is it's going to take the motor and propeller and it's going to it's going to iterate back and forth to actually optimize there's a lot more to this um actually but there's a lot more to this and it'll it'll optimize the motor around the propeller to create an optimal propeller or motor for that propeller so let's go back through and we're going to copy that so i, I highly suggest you use this design motor um sort of optimization because what I usually find is that the motor ends up being the thing that's going to fail on you. If the motor is not well matched to the rest of the power system, so the voltage or the propeller itself, it's not going to run and you're going to get the mission to fail. So this is an important thing. Um, I highly suggest you use this script. Similarly, we're going to do, we're going to do the same thing for the rotors. Um, these numbers are sort of made up. Um, I don't have any real intuition why this is four amps or this one's two um, and why it's 85, but that, hey, that's what we're gonna do. Maybe because this is considered to be um, a low efficiency rotor motor. Um, but we're gonna, we're gonna size this off and do the same function again. And then similarly, we're gonna do the same thing where we loop for four lift motors um, and we're gonna, we're gonna append those to the lift rotor motors. Just again, sorry, it's a mouthful. And then thankfully, we are now actually done. Except for, as you probably noticed, there's a lot of stuff we didn't account for here. We don't have a landing gear. Um, there's no motors that are like actually appended. So I've skipped through some things here. So I'm going to add just an extra set of expressance drag. Now there's there are drags. Um, sorry, let me make sure to do copies up here. Um, sorry about that. Okay, yeah. So there are um, some excrescent drags item um, items added to the in Swab automatically. We have um, a markup that adds, for example, um, you know, just some baked in things that like for like antennas, pitot tubes, things like that. Those are pretty standard, you know, regardless of what the size of your vehicle is, and those kind of um, scale, you know, if, even if it's large or small, you still need a pitot tube and an antenna, and those are the same. So those are just blanketed just added to swab you don't have to account for that but because we are overlooking things like landing gear and some of the motor drag we're going to we're going to add an extra set of expressions drag um, and this is a drag area so you can change the area later this is something specific to this script you could do this in much more detail for example if you want to add landing gear in more detail we could do that i don't have time today to, to show you more of that some of the other scripts we actually do a much more in-depth breakdown of what these areas would be to calculate them um, but we're going to skip to that today. All right, so that should be the full vehicle. So we turn the vehicle here. Now, once we have the vehicle, let's go to the top here. We're going to set up. Um, actually, let's let's export this with OpenVSP. So we're going to export um, this live in VTOL, and we're going to we're going to take this and we're going to we're going to run that. Oh wait, I'm running the wrong one. I want this one. Sometimes it runs the wrong one. This will take a minute because um, cannot find Parm. 
Well, something didn't work because that went too quick, but let's see what happened. So that this is the way it should look like. Let's see, did I not? Ah, I did not add the motors and the rotors, so they're not appropriately added. And the horizontal, so I need to go make, make sure that those are appropriately added. This is why it's good to check. Um, oh, yeah, I didn't append the component here. So that's missing. And then I didn't append, append something. That motors, no, that's those. I definitely didn't copy something. <laughs> Let, let's keep moving on and assume that we copied it for now. Um, and I'll just run this the, the non-live one and upload that one later. So because that didn't append, and I definitely missed a line. So there's not propellers. And I appended the, the uh, well, I think the deep load rotor is not appended. Which rotor? The lift rotor? Uh, deep, deep rotor, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, this one. Uh, you could go down. This one? The motor. No. Uh... I do see this appended here. Um, the, the, uh, the, deep, the deep rotor motor. Yeah, this one's appended. Oh. Mm. Yeah, did I? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure what um what I'm missing because I I ran this earlier today. Let me just run this again and see see what came out wrong. Yeah. So design diameter. So something got mistyped somewhere. So the booms have a diameter that's incorrect, and this one. So. Here for for reference, the the real tutorial. If I actually run this one, this one shouldn't error. I did run this earlier, unless I just made a mistake here in copying something. <laughs> uh oh, I mean, I made a mistake. That did not error earlier. Great. Uh, I must have copied something and messed up a line somewhere. Container is not object lift plus cruise. So that makes it seem like the lift plus cruise network is not appended. Oh, you know what? I deleted a line, if you remember. That's what it is. Yeah, so it appended, I got, uh, this is the year, the reason. Okay, does does anyone make, does that make sense why that was failing now? Um, I didn't, I appended, but I did not append a component. Um, so the difference is that if you append a component, it will actually know that this component and figure out what it is and it'll put it to the right data structure. So now this should work now. Um, we're gonna write that to the vehicle. There we go. So this will this is all working. So you, right, what you're seeing right here on the bottom are the um, the parameters of the airfoils that are being copied over to, to Open BSP, and this is going to take about a minute to copy over. So we'll we'll start moving on, but then once it's done, we'll open the vehicle and make sure it looks good. So we're gonna, we wrote that, um, and then the next step was we're going to set the analyses, and the analyses are fairly quick. Um, and so we're going to set up do set up analyses. So we'll make a set of function that does this for us, which is down here. And we're gonna stack this up right here. So the first set of analyses, so the first thing we're gonna do is, oh, this one needs to take the vehicle. So the analyses need to know what the vehicle you're dealing with are. Um, so it'll end up copying over, it's not actually copy, it's, it's more of an alias. It's gonna alias over the vehicle. Um, and use those for the different sets of analyses. So the base vehicle set of analyses is this one. This basically just allows you to append it. So this is just a container that then you append the, um, the weights analysis. So, or so the different sets of analyses. So the first one we're gonna do is add weights. 
like I said, we're not going to run the weights, but um, this is how you would use them. So you'll append the, the, um, the weights here. The next one is the aerodynamic analysis. So for this, we're using the Fidelity Zero. Now, Suave has a ton of different um, aerodynamic analyses, mostly eVTOL stuff. I would just stick with Fidelity Zero. It has a great VLM. Um, you could do CFD. You could use AVL. Um, and then there's also one that's, that's um, what is it called? The Aerodas model. And that's used, we use that for small transitioning um, UAVs. So there are a few different aero models. We're going to stick with the Fidelity Zero because that's the, probably the better one for this. Now um, we're going to add a drag coefficient increment. So remember we set a drag area and we're going to have a drag coefficient of 0 0.4. And so if, this is just some a number that we took out of um, fluid dynamic drag. That's a, that's a book by Harner. And we're going to use that 0 0.4 for something that's somewhat aerodynamic, but not quite fully fared. Um, and we're going to, we're going to scale it by the reference area. Add that. And then this next set of lines um, are the energy. What this does is it links says, hey, when you actually want the energy of the vehicle or the energy networks, like analyze the thrust basically, or what's being produced. So thrust or power of the vehicle, call this energy network that we set up. So this is an important linking step that needs to be there, um, needs to know, run the networks. Now you can put multiple networks in swab. It is technically possible that I could put a multi-cop, like two sets of um, battery propeller networks. So if I had a multi-copter and I actually just assumed, hey, each propeller and motor was independent with its own battery set, I actually can't append multiple uh, set of networks to, um, to, the, to the vehicle. And it will, it will then, when it wants to throttle these for a mission, it will can access each independently. However, it will only throttle them the same. So um, this is like the only real use case of this is like I said, if you have a multi-copter and for some reason they're all driven from a different set of batteries and a different set of speed controls, different set of, so they're all independent systems, you could do that. Um, but this is, this is how that works. Um, noise analysis, um, we really don't need this. We could probably skip this over, but we're gonna, we're gonna um, include that anyways. Um, planet analysis, this one actually is needed. So this gives you gravity um, and other features. Um, so the radius of the earth and things like that. I think you can also call earth if you want, but it doesn't really matter here. It'll default to earth. And then the atmosphere. So we're gonna use the US 1976 atmosphere. I think at some point there were other atmospheres in Suave, but we'll, we'll stick to this one. And then we'll return the analyses. Okay, so that was pretty fast um, to set this up. This is, these are a lot more straightforward, but now let's go and open up that vehicle again, now that we fix that issue. So this is the live one and let's make sure it looks good. Here we go. Okay, so that looks like the vehicle I promised before. And um, so I mentioned before, these are using propeller design and this is what happens when you use propeller design and not a rotor package. You end up with something that looks like this. Um, took a class at Stanford and um, they didn't really differentiate between these two. And this is really not what you want in a, in a rotor. Um, however, this propeller looks beautiful here. Um, so yeah, this looks overall fairly good. Um, I guess the yeah, fuselage does not quite well match this, this uh, wing, but it's, it's fine. It, it all looks pretty decent. So it looks like something that someone proposed, but it's not a commercially viable product but it, it should fly. Great. Now let's, now that we've set up the, the vehicle there, or sorry, the, the vehicle and we've set the analyses, let's actually um, call the analyses and then we'll finalize them. So this is, this finalize process is incredibly important. So what Swab does is it actually pre-runs um, the VLM. So the vortex last model and it'll actually build the aerodynamic models ahead of time. So when you're actually querying the mission, you don't need to run the full aerodynamic models um, at actual runtime. This saves a lot of comp uh, computation time because if in a vortex last model, the lift is linear and the, um, the drag is parabolic, right? So it's pretty straightforward there. Um, some of the other buildups are done. The ones that need to be done at runtime are done on runtime. So some of the, the drag buildups, they are done on runtime. The propellers, for example, they're done on runtime because those are 
not easy to build a circuit model, but for simple things, um, inviscid lift, you do just pre-calculate that. So this finalized set um, step is incredibly important. I think this is a really easy one to overlook. If you don't put this in here, it will not run. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a mission. I'm going to go a little bit faster. Um, I don't really have a hard time constraint because it's in the evening for me. But if you folks um, have a hard time constraint, um, let me know because I can try to finish this up a little faster. All right, so we're going to set up the mission. Like I said, though, we, we are through the hardest part of all this. The, the vehicle is by far the hardest. This is a very simple mission. I'm also going to cut through and show you exactly what you need to set up a mission. Um, some of the other tutorials have a little bit of extra fluff. This is just kind of a straight to the point. So I also need this, so the def. So again, we're going to make a function. This is analyses mission sequential segments. This is not the only option you can use. So it's actually possible to use this. Um, you can do all at once. That's the other option. This will set it as one system of equations and solve the um, solve the system equations of the mission in one giant matrix. Um, sequential segments, what that does is solve each segment in the mission independently, one by one. So it uses the results of one to affect the other. So those are both, I highly suggest sequential segments unless you really need all at once. Um, this is just step here, just lets me type less. Um, and now base segments. So we use base segments as a way to um, set like defaults for the rest of the other segments. So I'm going to have some common things. So I want eight control points. Swab discretizes the, um, the segments into discrete points. We use Chebyshev co-location points for that. So this is eight cosine space points. Um, and this is what this option is. Uh, the default in Swab is eight. Um, we ran an analysis and you can actually get down to um, three or four and actually not have a huge um, issue in um, accuracy for a cruise mission. For some of the climb segments that have lots of changes in altitude, you would want to actually use more segments than maybe um, four. But but eight is, I think, a very well discretized uh, problem. Initialize battery. This sets up the battery um, initials for the mission. Um, so it, it helps to make sure it knows the charge and what the state of charge is for all the conditions for the, the mission. Now we're going to skip a few things. We're going to skip the planet position because the latitude and longitude of the vehicle does not affect the, um, the actual flight of the vehicle because it does not affect the atmosphere um, or any of the other things. So we're going to skip this. This is used for solar UAVs and things like that. We're going to skip the stability analysis um, and for both the in the loop and in a, as a post process. So we're going to copy those over. Those are not necessary for today. The ones row, I usually keep that in there. We don't need that today. What this will do is um, sometimes you need to input a scalar quantity as a um, as an initial guess and that'll that'll scale it out now like i mentioned before we're going to have a hover segment a climb segment a cruise segment and then followed by a descent segment and then a final hover segment so the hover segment here to start will start at zero feet and at 100 it'll climb at 200 feet a minute and we're going to actually charge the battery to 95 percent of its full capacity um, usually it's not good for a battery to actually keep it hundred percent all the time. So this is more of a realistic, um, setting to put 95%. You could put 90%, um, something like that. I would just highly suggest in the, in the future for those actually designing aircraft for real, um, in, in operation, you wouldn't always fully charge it. Um, now this is an important line here. This is like counterintuitive. We're actually going to skip the mission unknowns. There's a reason for that. And it's because the hover network works a little bit differently. Um, so the lift plus cruise works a little bit differently than the hover. So we need to actually skip the unknowns for the, for the mission that are defaulted. And instead we're going to append the lift unknowns and residuals. So this, this is an automatic thing. Um, this is the biggest difference between um, swap 2.4 and 2.5 is how this works. So this line basically does this automatically. It sets up the mission for you, but you do need to delete this um, knowing that. Um, and now you're probably going to ask, like, why didn't I just have this delete it? Um, and it depends on the mission segment. Some mission segments may not need this skipped and some will. So my, my thoughts here are, if you're going to use a, a hover segment with a lift plus cruise, you need to skip the unknowns here and add the lift and um, let this function add the lift unknowns and residuals. We'll append the segment to the, to the mission. 
And then this is a lot more straightforward swab type things that you, if you've used the tutorials um, before, um, the air speeds, the altitude ends and the climb rates. Now I don't need to put altitude start because I already had an altitude end here. It already knows that it's gonna start off whatever the last altitude was. So that'll be passed through. We're gonna climb at 70 knots. Again, I just picked a number that was nice. It's kind of what a Cessna will do. And we're gonna add the unknowns and residuals for crews. So this doesn't include both of the, um, this basically assumes that the, the lift rotors are now off and sets that up for the mission. Add that here. The cruise is very similar. We're going to cruise for 50 nautical miles at 100 knots. And we're um, it'll be at 3,000 feet because that was what the last altitude was. So this one is also fairly, fairly straightforward. Um, there are a ton of different segments in Suave. Um, these are just some of them. You can do constant angle. Um, there's a wide range of things that are possible. So I'm going to go through this fairly quick um, to show and get this working. So there's the descent. There's the hover again. The hover on the on the backside is very similar. Um, and then I'm going to return the mission. Now we're like 90% of the way there right now. So we have the mission here. And now, now that we have the mission, that sets up the mission. But now we want to evaluate the mission. So we're going to do evaluate. Um, and that will give us the results. So that will give us the results. And then we would like to plot these results, right? Because these results probably look pretty good. We want to know how they look. In older versions of Suave, you had to make your own plots. Now we have a lot of these plots already made for you. If you remember, we imported here with a star. Um, and this will just find all the plots. And you can actually just kind of start typing if you use an IDE and it will, will give you the plot options. So if I typed here, um, I don't know, plot aerodynamic forces, I could add an aerodynamic force plot and it would just take the results and, and we could add that. But we'll just stick with these force four um, plots. And so we'll call make plots here and I'll take the results. Let me just make sure I didn't forget anything obvious. And that all looks good. Okay, so let's run this now. That took a little bit over an hour um, to put this all together. And again, I cheated because I copied and pasted. Um, but see here. So this gave me a warning. Um, if you get warnings, um, I wouldn't worry. So this is just saying the optimum motor design failed. So that means that the propeller and the motor wasn't able to find something that worked exactly. But it used the slack constraints and restarted. So it will give you a motor that is physically feasible, but it's probably not going to give you that 95% that you asked for, which is totally fine. Uh, so this will this will be fine. You could continue trying to get something optimal. I think um, I think a lot of times this is people optimize a little bit too early, and, and I think this is one of these cases of it's going to get you close, and I think that's going to be totally fine for day one. So it's running right now. A lot of the time that actually takes here is the plotting. So here's the, it's about to spit out a lot of plots that you're about to see. All right, so we have tip mock numbers. So this, like I said, it's gonna spit out a ton of plots here. So the tip mock numbers, well, as we said, we designed 4.65 at hover. We got 0.65, so that worked pretty good. The mock number for the propeller is about 0.5. So this should be, um, I wouldn't say it's quiet, but I, it shouldn't be overly loud. We're not gonna get too many angry people until we do a noise analysis with more detail. So now this is more propeller-based information, so RPMs. So blue is the uh, propeller. So in all these plots, blue is propeller, and then the, the red is the, the lift rotor. So um, it shows the RPM, the propeller efficiency. So in climb, we lose a little bit of efficiency. But hey, but hey, we're over 80. That's probably about 80 something percent efficient in, in cruise and a little bit higher in descent. Um, the thrust in Newtons. The, the motor efficiency, again, we didn't get that 95% we asked for, but hey, we got uh, 80. 7%, almost 90 in the descent, a little bit lower at, at climb, but hey, it's pretty good. Um, power coefficients are here, the torque that actually comes off the, uh, the motors. Now for the lift, um, because these are only really hovering for a very short period of time, just to get to that 100 foot mark and then go, uh, you can see the RPM, so about 1400 RPM, the thrust values, so the thrust values are considerably larger um, for each rotor. Than, than just the propeller because we have to lift the vehicle. Uh, the motor efficiency is quite good though. We, we are over 80%. 
Now, propeller efficiency, using a rotor for propeller efficiency, this does not work very well. Um, for, for hover, you actually would want to use um, for a figure of merit. So we may need to make new plots that have figure of merit here instead of rotor efficiency, because this is this is just not even useful. And then on the other side, it's it's kind of nonsensical. So um, I wouldn't read too much into this. Again, one of my highlights here is I want to show the distinction between rotors and propellers. Um, even though in Suave we try to we treat them as the same thing, um, just I want people to keep in mind that they are not the same thing. Now this is a combined plot that shows them together, so if you don't want to break them out, but this is the same data. Now we have the throttle setting, so it's important here to check that when you design a vehicle that your throttle setting is not over one. So one would mean that you are using more power than the vehicle has available. You can see here we are not doing that. So at at hover here, we're only using a 70 something percent. Um, the most throttle we use is you know, almost 90% in the climb. Um, as you see here, as the battery drains, the amount of power available to the vehicle reduces, right? Because the battery has less voltage, therefore it can't supply as much uh, power. The throttle setting needs to increase to account for that. So what you can see here is this is the voltage. So there's the under load vo voltage in the open circuit. So the under load is if you took a, uh, a voltmeter and you stuck it on the battery instantaneously, that's what you'd read. But if you reduce the, took the power off the vehicle and then you put the voltmeter on, this is what you would actually read. Then you can see the battery energy, um, the specific power of the pack, and then um, the state of charge. So again, we start at 95% and we put it down about 35, uh, sorry, 0 0.35 of the battery, so 35%. Um, this is the state of energy. This is the power consumption. This is just another way to look at the voltage. Now, C rates are very important um, in a lot of battery packs because if you drive too high of a C, um, so a lot of times you can have batteries uh, burn up on you. You can see the C rate here, and we have the, both measures. We have the instantaneous and the nominal. Nominal is what most people use if you see something rated, uh, but instantaneous actually gives you a better idea because that adjusts for the voltage. Um, so there's some folks in the battery world who appreciate these types of plots. So we have both of these and then the current in amps um, of the whole system. You see the current during climb is actually one of the hardest for the vehicle. Now we get to the aerodynamic coefficients, so the angle of attack. I want to point out something interesting because we hover, <laughs> this goes up to minus uh, 90 and positive 90 um, angle of attack um, because now the vehicle is going up um, and then so it's a pure hover there. Um, our coefficients of lift. Now, if I look at this first, well, this is very close to stall, so I probably would want to um, cruise a, or sorry, climb at a little bit higher airspeed, but this is not totally unreasonable. And that may be why um, the, um, if you look at the power draw in climb, we lose a lot of power here. The CL is quite high, which means the drag's high. And you can see the L over D here is actually quite high um, during the climb segment. So we have an L over D about 12 and a half, which is actually quite good. Um, again, we're probably not accounting for everything, but this is very, um, very much in the ballpark for a general aviation size aircraft. So this is totally a reasonable value um, for what I'd expect. So maybe with some landing gear added, you would get a little bit lower and maybe be a little closer over here, um, but it looks totally reasonable. And now again, this is just the flight profile. Um, so the hover, the climb up here, we, again, we have eight points that go through in the descent and then the hover down. This is the pitch angle, the airspeed in miles per hour, and the range of nautical miles. You can change these to SI units if you want. And I think that's that's it for this uh, tutorial. What I'm going to do is um, stop the um, stop the recording, and then you guys can ask further questions if you like.